Hello, I'm back with some words of hope naman. Okay, kasi it's not all lost. For me talaga, global warming and the end of everything. <laughs> the, this period of which I call the end of life as we know it. Um, ano ba? It is a period that's scary and offers so many challenges. Challenges is a euphemism for scary shit, right? Sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. But anyway, scary shiz, diba? Anyway, but really, um, it's also, for me, talaga, it's an opportunity to rethink civilization. Kasi sobra tayong kampante for the longest time. Eh, since the since colonization, eh, we were so kampante na, ah, this is the only way of living. This is how we're supposed to do it. Now let's spread it. Let's conquer the world and spread this way of living and we're so convinced about it. And then for those hundreds of years, humanity, has been, Western humanity has been so convinced and so ano, self-righteous pa about it. Pero now, we're being taught to rethink it all. Um, forced. Forced to rethink it all. And so how do we think appropri- So how do we rethink it? Well, kasi wala nang choice eh. Parang ano, pipilitin mo pa ba, mag-consume na mag-consume ganun, mag-produce na mag-produce ganun, and nauubos na nga yung tubig, nauubos na nga yung petrolyo, nauubos na nga yung guba, tapos umiinit pa yung mundo. Kailangan yata magba- may magbago. Di ba? Parang ganyan. So, we're forced. So, what needs to be done? First, I think we have to rethink appropriate technology and apply it. Nung panahon ni E.F. Schumacher, um, there was a time that he talked about appropriate technology. And I think we can go back to those ideas. Hindi naman kailangan yung kay Schumacher, pero yung ideas lang na technology should be friendly and responsive to nature and humanity. And the way we use technology and the way we apply technology should really be, um, in a, should the, the, the technology should be such that it is in a scale that allows for human flourishing and for the flourishing of nature. And not the other way around, that humans exist and nature exists for the technology and for production. Um, so there will be necessary high technology fixes, you know, in how we can use uh, more tech computers to be able to do to do problem solve, wicked problem solving um, using big data. Diba? But we really have to restructure our world and its production methods and our way of living um, and our whole technology technological system so that it's more responsive to the world not not destructive and not placing not a kind of technology that places human beings at the center okay we have to explore the possibilities of prosperity without growth okay so that the point is um the whole idea of prosperity and development are is too growth focused and because of that um that's the reason why we're destroying our world then next we should be open to other rationalities that we marginalize with with, with the whole imposition of modernity. So, we have to go back to the rationalities of more traditional communities and civilizations in order to understand what they meant by a good human society and a good human life. Because there, they can help us with our whole process of repentance and rebirth. Eh? Because if we engage them, maybe we'll begin, begin to realize how our own systems of valuation are destructive and could be actually more creative. Okay? Um, Siyempre, yung invent clean sources of energy. Alam nyo na yung mga yun, di ba? But most of, but, I sorry, most of all, eh, wall yung nakalagay dyan, siguro niisip si Trump. But most of all, we must work on finding a new way of being in the world with others. Okay? Kasi yun na nga, the whole problem is that we have been living in a way that is very ego and anthropocentric and the own, parang technology, our way of being, our systems of production, have really just helped to further the egocentrism and anthropocentrism of human beings such that we have forgotten the care of the other or the responsibility for the other. So, um, none of this will matter, all these changes will not matter without repentance and rebirth and the conversion that it entails. So how do we bring that about? Isn't it possible that as the environment degrades and resources become scarce, we degrade to our totalitarian tendencies. That's what I was talking about kanina. And we fall into a battle for resources. Now, because we have a genuine chance to rethink civilization, um, we also have a chance to fall into greater disarray. Talagang pwede, 
global warming and all the changes and all the ends of oil and the water will really have a chance, will really possibly push us into greater disarray. Okay? Um, like, okay, what do I mean by the end of oil? <clears throat> Sorry, I, I kind of mentioned it, but I, just so you know, these are looming crises talaga, aside from global warming. Sabay nun, um, oil nga, petroleum, which is our main way of producing food and everything else, is running out, and we have really no other alternative fuel for mass production. So we really have to rethink mass production. Tapos soil, there's really going to be a crisis of topsoil because topsoil, which is where everything grows, is really a very thin layer in our on our on the on the earth on our topography. It's a very thin layer, like centimeters all over the earth. It's just three centimeters, and it's being washed away because of erosion, because of deforestation, and also it's being killed by pollution and the excessive use of fertilizer. So we're killing our own um, ground soil where, where we plant. So there's also the crisis of the end of soil. And then there's also the crisis of the end of water. Potable water is becoming more scarce because of global warming. It's drying up. And then water is not, rain not, is not falling anywhere where it's supposed to fall. So also more than that, we're polluting our water sources and we're using it up uselessly such that um, we're eating up our groundwater and the ancient um, aquifers, which is like oil, hindi na yun mapupuno ulit. E na. Okay. Um, so those are the coming crises. And then it's, it's really going to provoke wars maybe over water, oil, soil, and even territory because as global warming hits, a lot of territories are going to start sinking into the sea, especially coastal um, cities. But if we build on the framework of repentance, we make people realize that we have built a world that is violent to themselves and to others, especially to make everyone realize that our being sustained is being sustained at a cost to others. So we exist only because of the sacrifice of others and that we must minimize the cost of our existence. I think that's the whole change of the framework. Eh? Parang we have to really, it's really a, it's really a, a call for humility that we're not the centers of uh, a call for generosity that we have to think of others more and a call to um, creativity in living in a life that is not destructive but more creative for others. Okay. So we must help humanity, them, destructive, us, realize that we have no other option than to reform society along the lines of respect, responsibility, and care, and that our well-being and human flourishing is tied to the well-being of our natural environment, and that our well-being is tied to the flourishing of our own fellow human beings, and the flourishing of the environment, because we can only be most fully ourselves if we realize our creativity and our capacity to nourish others is the source of our human fullness. Only when we are creative is when we are fully human. Only when we act in a way that really is genuinely creative, are we fully human? It doesn't really matter what we consume or how much we consume or, or how we consume. What matters is that we realize our creativity as human beings. You, you see that all the time. That's why we always try to consume in very creative ways. Eh. Diba? Kanyari, kape lang yan, kape lang yan. Kailangan mo ba artehan? Oo, kasi creative ako, humanity ako. Kakain ka lang ng karne. Kailangan ka ba, sorry, kailangan ka ba bang maging um, creative pa dyan? Oo, kasi creative nga ako, tao ako. Because we, we know intuitively that our humanity, we realize ourselves through our creativity. But, See, creativity really means realizing yourself in a way that enriches human beings, that enriches humanity, that enriches other people and ourselves and allows human flourishing. Okay. So the reason we are caught in the vortex of consumption is because the totalitarian existence of our egotism cannot fail us. And that's why we have to continuously consume. We are never really satisfied, only in communion. Can we find our capacity for creativity and fullness? And what do I mean by communion? Opening to being, opening to be, to, to the presence of beings, opening to the call of that which 
presences to us and calls us to our fullness as human beings. And which is the call, the transcendent order of that which gives. And it calls us to give. And it calls us to share ourselves in a way that allows other beings to flourish. And we can't be the center anymore. And that's that genuine repentance that will really save us, our planet, and our fellow human beings. Now, how do we begin? Okay. Well, we have to begin by counting the cost and speaking for the victims. Okay. Nature and non-aggressive and non-consumer societies. Sorry. Those are the victims in nature is a victim because the way we live has destroyed nature. But also the way we live has destroyed non-aggressive and non-consumeristic societies. We have to speak for them and we have to do things to help them. And then we also have to account for the cost of ourselves as beneficiaries. Parang tayo, tayo kaya ang, ang ano eh, ang parang tayo ang, um, apa na ba yun? We are the ones who benefited from the destruction, especially the upper classes, the, the more well off, and the westernized, and mainly that just means the westernized, we have really benefited from the destruction. So we have to also say that, okay, we benefited from the destruction. And the fact is, as while we continue to live in a way that benefits from destructiveness, that means we're not living fully creative human lives. So we have to regret that. We have to think of better ways to live. Okay, and Then... We also have to find exemplars of the better way of being. So like I mentioned, siyempre, idol na idol ko si Pope Francis. Because wow, these values of his are amazing. Okay? So we have to find people who have concretely lived this value as model persons. Because only when we, the heart recognizes the life, the presencing of a human being um, who has this, who has the heart for justice and goodness and truth and 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 you know creativity then we will be able to recognize and be able to understand okay, how should we be how should we live diba? um kunya, donald trump is an exemplar but a negative exemplar kasi parang his existence shows people how you you can live in a way that's destructive and self-centered and non-creative in any way whatsoever diba? now we we should we shouldn't they draw us, eh. Parang may, may capacity rin those people to draw us. Diba? Kaya ang daming Trump, ano, I, nag-a-idol kay Trump. But we also now have to really prom- to begin to champion different kinds of exemplars like Pope Francis again. Um, there are other people like that. And there are so many people like that. Even in our nation, there are so many people like that, right? Um, who have lived for justice and truth and goodness and creativity who call us and challenge us to live our life according to the good. But in the end, we can only hope. <laughs> Which means to live the lives of, we ourselves have to live the lives of exemplars. We must change our lives from egotistic totalities to people of infinite responsibility. Okay, We have to sacrifice the way that sacrifices for the good according to the good because that is the way of living in hope. You know, according to the truth and the good, and in living according to the truth and the good, that brings with it a force. Yun yung alam ni Gandhi sa Satyagrahay, that the truth, if you live it, is forceful enough to bring change. It will bring a force. It's capable of really transforming the world, literally. It just we just need to really have enough good people. Not because the good people will change the world, but because but because we are cooperating with the infinite creative being that really bears the order of the world. Okay. But I do not I believe in the end, no matter how screwed up we are, and no matter how destructive we are, and no matter what we do to the planet. Evil will never prevail. Evil will never prevail. And somehow, the good transcendent order, the play that gives us, the play that is as gift, God will find, a, will actually make all things right. We don't know how, we don't know why, but the point is, we have to really begin to, just because 
it's the better way to be and maybe just because it will realize our human flourishing and the flourishing of the people we love we just really have to live according to the order that is being called that we are being called to realize by that transcendent order by the transcendent love that's well oh there that's the end of my slides okay i'm going to stop presenting now so that i can see you guys and uh wait lang ah i will okay there i'm back i am going to stop presenting so here okay i'm back this is my last uh, no, i'm gonna i want to face you guys and say all right so i hope you understood yabang no kalmo ang hirap ng pinagsap yung sinasabi ko pero sana you understood my position on why we must stand with the good why we must respond to the play that gives in a way that's creative so that we ourselves realize ourselves in a way that is um able to restore our world and ourselves to our truth um and to be able to sana whatever destruct whatever scary thing awaits us in the future or good will be transformed into a good thing an opportunity for realizing our humanity and rediscovering what we are and who we are and what we should be diba? and who we should be so it is really a period this is the end of life as we know it which really just means it's an opportunity to recreate our world and to recreate ourselves in this world of ours. So there, that's all. Thank you very much, and thank you for being there. I wish, I hope that you learned. I have not learned, but I hope that somehow it's provoked enough thoughts that help us, that will help you um, at least try to understand how we can live better. And if you're teachers, to pass on that idea na we really, really need to repent the way we exist. Yeah. Why? Not just because we want to repent the way we exist, but because we want to get be have a rebirth into a fuller and more authentic human existence. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Everyone has to say that, right? Because it's really the thing. You have to really stay safe, guys. Okay, can I just say, please naman yung social distancing na yan. Mahirap ba intindihin? Talaga. Okay, anyway, that's it. Wash your hands. It really helps. And alcohol. Okay, if you can wash your hands, always bring alcohol. Anyway, that's it. That's all. Thank you very much. See you in the future somehow. Bye.